Glory. You know, children's Bibles have a lot of revelation in there. <laughs> I like the little pictures that have built-in visions and stuff. They just trigger you to go into your own visions and revelations of the Lord as you read the words. <laughs> they come alive and they're full of electricity of God. We were reading the other, the children's Bible the other day and uh, came to this one part that Jesus ascended into the cloud and the clouds hit him. And bam, just jumped off the page. Like, we are the cloud of witnesses. We, we have Jesus hidden within us. In the same way that he's gone is the same way that he's coming. He's coming through us, the cloud of witnesses. <clears throat> but it was a glory cloud. If there's no glory, how are the people supposed to see him? We got to go from glory to glory by ever beholding him. And the ones who behold him are the ones who can show him. So we really need to be, even just like David, he would be someone after God's own heart. Because when you pursue God's heart, that's what comes through your heart is God's heart. And then you show what God is really like instead of just like, you know, getting all mad about things. And, you know, <laughs> you actually have some peace in your words. You'll have uh, the Prince of Peace, you know, slipping through your mouth and just you'll be shooting revelation rocks that kill giant problems. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting that like, man. That's where the anointing is today. It's in the children's Bible. <laughs> I mean, I read the the King James too that day, but nah, it wasn't as powerful as the as the children's Bible. <laughs> yeah. Some days it's the children's Bible. Some days it's God talking through the donkey, and sometimes it maybe maybe might even use the King James Bible. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, what is it to be the light of the world? Remember Jesus, when he walked the earth, he revealed the Father. through Because he said his words are spirit and life. And the spirit of his Father was in every word he spoke. Because he only said what he seen his Father doing. And he only did what he saw, well, he only did what he saw his Father doing and only said what he hear him saying and stuff like that. So, it's the same thing with us. We only can only do what we see Jesus doing because he's the ref he's the full manifestation of the father the father's fullness is in Jesus and then Jesus is in his body the temple of the holy spirit the church and so we we're the ones who reflect him onto the earth as the light of the world but reflecting what it's not just uh, do's and don'ts and morality and stuff like that that all comes in alignment after you spend time with him instantly just by your heart burning with his heart burning through it but we're reflecting what his spirit his words like we've become living epistles built up into a spiritual house which is he's the one who builds the house by his spirit and so the church reflects Jesus are almost you could say projects Jesus into the world to enlighten it for their eyes to open to see him it's never to see the church man it's to see him so because he's hidden in that cloudy witness that glory when you speak words full of glory he like wherever what was that it says in uh Colossians there when you appear in glory, there are also appear with you or something like that. Colossians chapter 3. I can't remember the scripture exactly right now. I just kind of woke up and dropped my kid to school. But anyways, when we when he appears, we'll appear with him in glory. When Or when we appear, he'll appear with us in glory or something like that. In Colossians 3. It's to radiate and to manifest him. To reflect him into the world. Because that's what takes the veil of Satan off of the minds of everyone buried in darkness. Like years ago, I was just marching on this, uh, well, I was, I was on this horse, this white horse, symbolic of just flowing, letting the Holy Spirit carry me. And uh, I had this, this banner, but it was like a surrender flag, you know, because <laughs> that's how you walk with God. It's 100% a surrendered walk. And so we were, mar I was marching on this horse with the surrender flag, this white, powerful horse, lightning white, you know. And then I looked over, and there was another person 
on a horse with me and our banners were, you know, two shall chase 10,000 or whatever that scripture is. I can't remember anything right now. I just woke up. So don't judge me. <laughs> it, it turned into a banner that read Jesus. When we combined our faith and our destiny and our purpose, it was all Jesus was the center He's the center of every relationship. That's the only way you'll ever open the eyes of the blind to see him. <laughs> and it the banner, like my surrender flag and that person's surrender flag turned into a banner that read Jesus. And I looked what we were marching towards and there was all these people in darkness. And when they would look up to see the banner, not to see us riding the horses, but when they would look up to see the banner that read Jesus, I saw the, the darkness crack off of their faces, their foreheads and their eyes and their faces became in light and psh, the darkness just broke off of them. The Bible says that the, that the veil of Satan, you know, the veil is taken away in Christ. So what you do is you just wrap around them and just reflect Christ through your innermost being in your cloudy witness so that they can taste and see that God is good and God is real. God is alive and God is spirit. And we, we are spirit too because we've been born in the spirit. Just like Enoch, we were translated into the kingdom. <laughs> Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. What happened? God translated him into himself. And we've been born again. Where are we born again of? <laughs> You've been translated into the kingdom of light. For what purpose? To reflect the king of that place back into the world so that it's on earth as it is in heaven. What is it like in heaven? Full of peace, full of revelation of him, full of glory, full of joy, full of awe, full of wonder, full of God, full of love. The fullness of everything is God's love coming through his church. And it's not just being nice to people. It's being, pouring out your spirit, his spirit through your spirit onto people. <laughs> that's, the, that's the kindest thing you could ever do. You know, because <laughs> I've seen a lot of people, they're really nice to people, but they're fortifying them in depression. Oh, don't listen to that person. They're just being, they're mean for telling you the truth that depression is actually, you know, a demon spirit <laughs> that's working with your chemical, you know, whatever. I went through depression for 10 years. So as someone speaking with experience, I know that it's a demon because I took authority over it using the word of God. I would speak the opposite of what I what it made me feel. I feel hopeless. I feel I'll never be anything. I'd say, no, I'm a conqueror in Christ. I have the hope of his salvation burning in my heart. I may not feel it right now, but I know it's true because God's word says it is true. Anyone who's born from above is a new creature or whatever and stuff like that. Anyways, I got to go. I got to go drop off my kid. Hope this blessed you. Uh, what is it? Let's be a cloudy witness for Jesus. <laughs>